This video will further expand on the concept of chemical shift in NMR, expanding on our previous video on magnetic shielding. So thus far in this chapter, we've shown how the magnetic dipoles of a given nucleus can result in two different energy levels based off of whether that is a spin up or spin down nucleus of plus one half or minus one half. These two different energy levels depend on H bar gamma, the magnetogyric ratio, which is equal to a constant called the nuclear factor times the charge of the nucleus divided by two times the mass of the nucleus. So it equals a bunch of constants times the magnetic field in the z direction that our nucleus is in. So the photon, the frequency of the photon, which is needed to transition between this lower energy and higher energy uh, level based off of our magnetic dipole, the frequency of that photon equals the magnetogyric ratio times the z component of our magnetic field divided by 2 pi. So we discussed in our previous video how electrons generate a magnetic field that opposes the original magnetic field that our nucleus experiences or that is being generated by our NMR spectrometer. And the extent to which those electrons oppose that, that field is measured by the shielding constant uh, sigma. Sigma is typically on the order of 10 to the minus fifth or about 10 parts per million that it'll decrease any external magnetic field that our nucleus experiences. So our Z component of our magnetic field now is the original magnetic field times one minus sigma. We also defined the chemical shift in the previous video to be 10 to the sixth or one million times the resonance frequency of our given hydrogen uh, nucleus minus the resonance frequency of the reference molecule tetramethylsilane, TMS, a silicon atom surrounded by four methyl groups divided by the frequency of our NMR spectrometer, typically measured in, in megahertz. So of course the TMS forms a reference which is going to be defined as 0.0, .0 parts per million, which is the typical unit of our chemical shift. Okay, so what if we wanna look at what's the difference in, in chemical shift between two individual nuclei? So let's say delta two, minus delta one, chemical shift of nucleus two, minus chemical shift of nucleus one. Assuming we're just talking about proton one, or, or sorry, H1 NMR, or a single proton. So that'd be 10 to the sixth times nu two minus nu TMS over nu spec, minus nu one minus nu TMS over the frequency of the spectrometer again. So that's going to equal well, we have the new TMS is gonna cancel, being subtracted in both cases. So we have 10 to the six times new two minus new one over the frequency of the spectrometer, which is equal to, once we substitute in these values here, they both have the constants of gamma B naught over two pi. So we have 10 to the sixth gamma B naught over two pi times new spec times and then substituting in these values, we have sigma one minus sigma two. Okay, so we know from our definitions up here that we have B naught is going to equal two pi times the frequency of the spectrometer divided by the magnetogyric ratio times one minus sigma. Now, since sigma is around 10 to the minus fifth, or it's only gonna change about the fifth sig fig in this denominator here when we subtract it from one, we're gonna assume that one minus sigma is approximately one. Okay, so our two pi nu over gamma one minus sigma is gonna become just two pi nu over gamma. So when we substitute that in, the value of B naught up here, we're gonna get that delta two minus delta one the difference in our chemical shifts equals 10 to the sixth times gamma over two pi nu spec, the remaining uh, prefix values up here, times the value of B naught, which we're gonna get as two pi nu spec over gamma. Everything inside these parentheses is going to cancel. And then that's all multiplied times sigma one minus sigma two. So we get that the difference in chemical shift between any two hydrogen nuclei 
is equal to minus 10 to the sixth sigma 2 minus sigma 1. So as I mentioned in the previous video, because the shielding of TMS, our reference, is so high, it's almost always going to be greater than the shielding in any given hydrogen nucleus we encounter. So that means that our chemical shift of our given hydrogen nucleus is almost always going to be greater than zero parts per million. So as I mentioned, these different sh uh, shielding constants give us a kind of distinct foot footprint or fingerprint for any given chemical species, depending on all the hydrogens it has. And these tend to show up in, in distinct regions in our spectrum here. So most of the time you'll find almost every hydrogen nucleus between 0 and 10 parts per million, because I mentioned that these values of sigma are typically on the order of 10 to the minus 5. So at 1 to 2 parts per million, you typically find things like alkanes, find things like alkyl halides where the shield where there's a little more uh, where there's a little more depletion of electron density up there probably you know two to four or so ether is a little bit further up alcohol is a little bit further than that where you have adjacent groups that are really really starting to pull electron density away from those more shielded alkyl hydrogens then you get up to things like alkenes and even aromatics at the top end of the spectrum uh, because of other effects due to the shape of those molecules and the way that uh, magnetic fields behave in the presence of, of pi electrons. Pi bonds tend to generate magnetic fields which are uh, have effects that are quite different resulting in these chemical shifts being much higher despite the fact that things like alcohols and ethers are going to withdraw local electron density more than them. So all things combined, um, we can see from whatever, uh, whatever nuclei show up in our spectrum, in what kind of region, what kind of protons we expect to, to find in our given molecule. And also uh, comparing to reference spectra, we can typically see uh, what compounds are or are not in a given sample.